Hey everybody, it's Andy from Hihan, and today I'm going to be making piquillo peppers stuffed with sea bass. Um, basically all it's going to be is a bechamel with some butter and some flour, some whole milk, a little bit of salt. We're going to make a really thick bechamel like you would for croquetas. And then I'm going to chop up this sea bass into little bite-sized chunks. We're going to mix it with the thick bechamel, stuff these piquillo peppers with that sea bass bechamel and then we're gonna bake it in the oven and then eat the stuffed peppers. It's gonna be awesome. Okay we're back. So the first step for making our bechamel we're gonna combine some butter with some flour, warm it up on the stove, mix it together and then slowly whisk in milk and then we're gonna season it and that'll be our bechamel. Let's get started. Let's add a little, add a little whole milk to my coffee. That was missing it. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and add some milk. Uh, sorry, some uh, some butter to our to our pot right here. This looks like I'm not trying to make a ton of bechamel. I don't know how much this would be. Maybe this would be like half half a stick of butter. Four tablespoons, sure. That sounds, that sounds about right. I'm gonna go ahead and just let that warm up on the stove real quick while I get my flour ready. I'm also gonna get myself a tool that I was missing before that's gonna be helpful here. And that's just you know, your, standard, your standard rubber spatula. In Spain, so I've been doing these catering gigs, and uh, you know it's like catering weddings uh, as a as one of the cooks as part of this team, and it's so humbling being out here in Spain. A, my Spanish is terrible, but additionally, there's a lot of names for like standard kitchen tools that you know if you even if you you have the ability to Google Translate it, which you don't, you just don't have time to. <clears throat> You know, when your hands are a mess and you're trying to plate 300 little hors d'oeuvres, you can't like whip out your phone and Google Translate this stuff. But the name for a rubber spatula here in Spain is lengua, which, you know, if, if you speak Spanish, you know, means tongue. And, I, you know, it kind of makes sense if you, you know, think about it as like a tongue scraping out, you know, the, the pot or whatever, but it's a good example of something that... You know, it just doesn't, it just doesn't really, uh, just doesn't really translate. So anyways, I'm gonna let this butter keep melting and then I'm gonna toss in my flour. My butter over here, as you can tell, has melted. How much flour do we want? You know, I'd say about 60% uh, flour by weight. As you can tell, I'm not uh, I'm not measuring this out because I'm being very bad. Uh, what I'm mostly going to do is just look at the consistency that this comes out as. <clears throat> I'm going to keep cooking this on the stove. I'm going to cook it until I kind of cook out that floury taste from it. You can see we don't have a ton of bechamel here. We'll get a little more volume. When uh, when we add the add the milk in, I'm gonna go ahead and dump in a little more a little more of my flour. This isn't an exact science, and it doesn't it doesn't have to be. Uh, you don't have to you don't have to break out your scale when you're cooking at home just for fun. If this goes horribly wrong, I'll show you how it goes horribly wrong, and we'll make another we'll make another batch. I got more flour. I bought more milk today. All I'm gonna do right here is just, you know, this is just hanging out at six out of 10 heat. And it's just gonna kind of cook while I stir it around and heat it up. And then I'm gonna whisk in my milk and season it and we'll have a thick bechamel. Okay, so my roux mixture has been cooking for about 12 minutes. Um, you can see it's gotten a little bit, uh, you know, more golden in color. And I'm ready to go ahead and whisk in my uh, my milk. I'm gonna be doing this one-handed. I'm gonna be doing it with a fork instead of a whisk. I'm also using milk that's straight from the fridge. 
um, which is cold. And normally you'd want to use warm milk, but <clears throat> this is this is part of the uh, part of the experience, right? You know, if this doesn't work out perfectly, this might take a while to stir up. You can see the consistency has already really changed. It's almost gotten a little, you know, sticky. All right, it's a little warm too. So I'm gonna turn this down a little bit to three. I'm gonna add in some more milk. You can see how that, that flour really, really takes the milk. I'm just gonna stir this up. It's a little tough with one hand. Let's go ahead and add a little more milk in. Great. I'm just gonna try to set this up here for a second while I stir this up. This doesn't look great right now, boys and girls, and that's that's completely acceptable. It's also it's gonna be stuffed into the Keo peppers, so it doesn't have to be. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be this perfect velvety smooth bechamel. I want it to be thick because I'm going to bake it and I want it to kind of hold up with the, uh, with the, when it's stuffed inside the piquillo peppers, you know, if it's a really loose bechamel, it's going to kind of, so you can see we're not, we're not having like a horrible failure right here with this, with this super cold milk we're doing we're doing okay you know this is turning into a thick bechamel are we using more milk than i thought are we making a little more bechamel than i expected absolutely we are is that okay yeah if we have a little extra bechamel we'll stick it in the fridge and then tomorrow i'll roll it into balls i'll bread it and we'll deep fry it and we'll make and make some Spanish croquetas. Okay, I can feel this cooling down a little bit. So I'm just gonna get it back on the stove. Maybe I add in a teeny bit more milk. But you can see this bechamel mixture I have right here, like this is the consistency almost that I want. I don't know if you can see that. You see how, you see how thick and nice it is? Seasoning, seasoning, very important here. Oh, you know what else I forgot? Oh, God. I also forgot an important component in a lot of... A lot of bechamels will include a little bit of nutmeg. Just a little bit. You, you want this final mixture here to taste really nice by itself. Does that make sense? And then we're going to... We're gonna mix in the lubina, the sea bass. Look at this beautiful bechamel we got. You saw me using cold milk, hot roux. We're doing we're doing freaking great here. Let's taste this. Hmm. I'm so I'm close. I'm close to where I want to be, but I'm not quite at the salinity level that I want to be. So I just hit it with maybe an eighth of a teaspoon more of this uh, kosher salt. Look at this mixture. Awesome, right? Awesome. Woo. Mm. Perfect, perfect. Next up, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop up my fish, let this bechamel cool down, mix the fish in it, and stuff my peppers. Okay, I am gonna do a quick audible um, just because I was thinking about the way that these are going to bake up. I'm going to take half my piquillo peppers that are drained. What I want to do is I'm going to mix, I'm going to blend these peppers, mix it with a little bit of this bechamel because I have too much bechamel. I'm only stuffing these six peppers. My baking dish is tiny. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a blended pepper, hopefully blended pepper bechamel base that the peppers are going to sit on top of as they cook. Done. 
done. This away. This goes in here. Look at that beautiful color. Oh, the smell is incredible. I love the way these paquillos smell. Oh, great. You can see I spilled a little paquillo pepper sauce on my fish. That's totally okay. I'm not gonna worry about it. Take about, you know, half, half a cup, three quarters of a cup of your bechamel, and let's just go for it. A red pepper, bechamel base, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Let's taste this for a second. Mmm. God, it's so good. Because my bechamel was nicely seasoned, I don't even need to worry about it. All right, so let's take about half this. And there we go. This area right here, that's where our little stuffed peppers are gonna sit. Set that aside. I'm gonna quickly chop up my fish here. These are the fillets from our, my wife and my, my wife and I had a Lubina battle, breaking these down. Last night on YouTube, it was a lot of fun. All I'm gonna do is cut these into kind of bite-sized little chunks. I don't really mind if I, I know I'm mangling these a little bit. No one's gonna know. They're gonna go and they're gonna get stuffed inside, inside the Keo peppers. This is uncooked at this point, but once this bakes in the oven, it's all gonna cook inside this bechamel mixture. Let's see, we got quite a bit of sea bass here. That's probably almost two cups of sea bass. One thing I forgot to do right there that I would like to do is wash my hands. One thing I forgot to do was just hit this with a little bit. The bechamel is perfect, but I also want, I want my fish to get a little bit of seasoning too. Perfect. Now I'm just gonna mix this up. I don't really mind if the fish gets a little smashed around. That's okay. I don't know if this sounds good to you, but this is, it's gonna be awesome. I've, I've done it with shrimp before. I've never done it with sea bass, but you can see what we have here is, is a lot of, there's a lot of fish in here. It's, you know, it's, it's as much fish as there is bechamel, which I think is gonna be a perfect amount for us. So, let's straighten things out. This is our next step. Stuffing the actual peppers. For this part, you just take each one, kind of open it up. Is this gonna be easier with a spoon? It, it will be. The one caveat I have with that is it's gonna be easier with a smaller spoon that I can use to really uh, press this bechamel sea bass mixture into the peppers, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. Because this hole's a little small, I want to shove that mixture, you know, as much of it as I can into this tiny opening, which isn't the easiest thing in the world. Once I get it like that, I'm just gonna take my little spoon, tamp it down into there. Give myself another little scoop, break it off, tamp it down in there. Nice. And that's my stuffed pepper. You can see I split it a little bit on the bottom. Not ideal, but we're experimenting here, guys. This is, and it's gonna be my wife and I eating these. I'm not, I'm not, you know, doing this for, for Thomas Keller. And even if I was, I think he'd like it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't apologize for, for serving these up, even if I, I split the bottom, you know? Sometimes when you're cooking, you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta be, you gotta be nicer to yourself. Look at this. 
beautiful sea bass stuffed piquillo peppers. And you saw, this wasn't, this wasn't a super labor intensive process. I got uncooked fish here, I made a quick bechamel, and here I am, just trying to, trying to stuff them um, bechamel and see this. Look at these, look at these friggin' stuffed guys. Oof, beautiful, beautiful. Can I fit six in my container? No, but are we gonna try? Yeah, yeah, 100%. This one's a little thin. I can feel like the, the walls of this pepper are a little thin. It feels, it feels precarious. And the opening's a little small. But, oof, come on. Come on, little guy. Work with me. Ooh, there we go. All right. And then one last little scoop. Press it down in there. You know what? One last little piece of one last little piece of fish on there. Beautiful, right? Nice. Nice. One, two, three, four. Ideally this this container would fit five of these guys. Um, do I think it would be nicer to have an even six? You know, three for me, three for my wife. I think that would be nicer. And god, I have so much I have so much freaking bechamel mixture left over. Oh, Maybe, maybe I fry up this bechamel mixture and we see, you know, how this, how, how these sea bass croquetas work out. God, it's a tight, tight squeeze in here, folks. And this last, oh, this last pepper's big. This last guy's a, a big kahuna. Ooh Look at that. I'm getting pretty fired up right now. I feel like this this has been a this has been a success, you know. With the bechamel, when you're doing stuff by eye like that, and you and you freaking you nail it, where you you get this bechamel that looks like this. It's a it's it's a good day. It's gonna be a good day, guys. Look at these. Look at these things. Man, can I fit it? Can I fit it? No, but am I gonna try? Yeah. A little on top. Voila. And there we have it. I'm gonna bake this at, let's say, three, 375, 375 degrees for about 30 minutes. And we will see how it comes out. God, this looks great, doesn't it? And now, folks, I'm just gonna take my bechamel out of the oven. Look at this, can you see this? Ah. Oh. It smells incredible. This is something that everyone absolutely needs to try at home. It is, uh, it is really, really delicious. I'm super excited to eat it later when my wife gets back from work. Anyways, I hope everyone has a great day and I hope you enjoyed this video.